honestly legitimately concerned about this? Are you is like AI one of your main worries in regards to the future? It, yes, it it's less of a worry than it used to be, uh, mostly due to taking more of a fatalistic attitude. It's going to be very tempting to use AI as a weapon. It's going to be very tempting. In fact, it will be used as a weapon. It will be used as a weapon. Um, so the 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 on ramp to serious AI. The danger is going to be more humans using it against each other. I think most likely that'll be the danger. So what happened with you where you decided or you be took on a more fatalistic attitude? Like what was there any specific thing or was it just the inevitability of our future? I try to convince people to slow down slow down AI to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. This seems Nobody like a listened. scene in a movie. Nobody listened. The robot Nobody listened. No one. This was futile. From this time forward, you will service us. Resistance is futile. Resistance is futile. Dana! Resistance is futile. The, the, the merge scenario with AI is the one that seems like probably the best. You, if you can't beat it, join it. That's like the purpose of Neuralink, is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI. Enable, Enable anyone, anyone who, wants who wants to have superhuman, to have superhuman cognition. 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 I think like we talk about AI being potentially the last invention that we have. Potentially the last invention that we have. I think that a high bandwidth BMI might be like really the first invention in many ways of like the next chapter of, of us. Potentially the last invention that we have. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Glad to see everybody here. It's a major blessing. We have David Beverly of Jesus Free Computer Geek. Going to go ahead and bring him on so we can get started. This is uh, something we haven't done in years. Last time we had him on, YouTube just shut down. Didn't like what we were saying. So here he yeah, is. There's that. I want to make sure I'm not distorting. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah it's, especially because we dared to pray, right? Yeah, I think that was the uh, the I started factor. to pray, and all of a sudden it went. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. thought you guys shut me off. I was like, yeah. whoa, what, what, did I say something wrong? <laughs> no, it was it was like the AI back then was already working. The stuff we're talking about now is like. The well, well there, there's that. Um, and uh, dare I say the ghosts in the machine, right? Yeah. Um, you know, um, I'm watching your intro. Well done, by the way. And I'm realizing it's hitting me as I'm watching the intro. Whoa. What I'm doing is serious. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> You know, here I am laughing about it. The Lord gives me this abundance of joy. And 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 so he's he's enabled me, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. King David said that, wrote that in the scriptures. And I think that's how I can look at these dark things and go, eh. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon. And I ain't worried about that. But hey, y'all might want to know what's up. You yeah. might want to know. And um, and so just the seriousness, the gravity, dare I say, dare, gravity, gravity, that fake thing. <laughs> it's hard to not yeah. say that and, word. The gravity. <laughs> we can say gravity as long as we're speaking, you know, with their truth about it, right? Yeah. Uh yeah, it's it's a cuss word in your world, isn't it? Yeah. 
banned, yes, hold on. removed. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So I wanted to show um, this. You can see it there, sort of. I wanted to show um, this is something I mentioned to you before we came on live, right? Mm -hmm. This is uh, the Wayback Machine. And it's it's been scrubbed, which is really bad. This is from 1997. This is Alexa Crawls. Alexa, you know Alexa, yeah. right? Okay, so uh, this is something I've been wanting to, to to get people to understand, and I've been talking about this for a long time. Is that AI didn't just appear? You know, we started hearing about it in Chat GPT in, in late uh, 2022, and Chat GPT had actually been around longer than that, but the public became aware of it, right? And I, I remember I saw a video you had put out, and it was your son yeah. did a piece, okay, mm -hmm. and that was profound. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And as a matter of fact, it was when you put that out was when I contacted you and said, Hey, Hey, I got a book that I just put out. You want to see this? And, um, did you ever get the copy? Yeah. I, I got it right here. Yeah. I was, oh, I was crazy. thinking, um, yeah. yeah, I was thinking when you did the book, I was like, man, did you just do like an instant response book to that video? Like, here's a book that'll tell you why that's bad, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, actually, I had crazy. started I had started months prior. Um, I had ran a camp, a failed campaign for local office. And uh, and suddenly I, I found this. Uh, it was so odd. You think I want to take a breather, right? Yeah. But Holy Spirit had, I was pulling a lot of two o'clock in the mornings and I'm putting this book together. And I was like, what? I'm supposed to write a book. And, and my poor folks that come around on my channel have been hearing me talking about, I'm putting together a book for like four years. Wow. But I couldn't decide which subject. You know, do I write about biblical cosmology? Do I write about all kinds of other esoteric stuff? You know, uh, the deception that we've been born into. And, and I realized, and I say in the book, in the opening pages, the thing that is really most pr pressing right now is what we call artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And where does that connect? Where does, you know, those of us in Christ Jesus, we pay a lot of attention to what so saith the Lord, right? A according to what the Bible ha writes, right? What we have in the, in the scripture. And um, well, where does that connect? And that's, that's what that book is about, right? Um, w wouldn't God have something to say about, about these days that we're living in, Right. And it seems to me that we're living in the end of days. As a matter of fact, I want to show you. Um, this is, I don't know. I will show you, show your, your, your folks here is what I want to show is the opening statement. One of the opening statements on, on the pages of my book uh, revised in the ISBN the table of contents. No, we don't want that. Um, you think I'd, I'd know which page it's on by this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't you know your book, Dave? This is an old preacher, Lester Sumrall. Now, a lot of my folks are here and they've heard this. So forgive me ahead of time. I'm an old guy. We repeat ourselves. But um, all denominations and most people die in the same first revelation they receive from God. The people that call themselves Lutherans today are living in the same blessing that Luther had some 400 years ago. Now think about that, right? The people that call themselves Wesleyans and Methodists today are living in the same blessing of Wesley from a couple of hundred years ago. It's very difficult to get out of a groove. It's very difficult to get out of a religious system. That's Lester Sumrall. I don't know if you've ever seen him preach, but that dude rocked, okay? And then I put in response, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. Well, how is that related? Is, is the church, and I, they called out ones, the ecclesia is the word I like to use. And, and I'm, I'm not saying this to be offensive. It, it breaks my heart. The last ones to receive the things that I'm talking about right now OK, I got to tell you, the pastors have been the last ones to, to see this. OK, um, and, I, and I'm going to give you a reason why in a moment here. I love you, too, Tricia, big time. 
And um, y'all pray for her too. I don't know. Did that ha already happen? She had a medical procedure coming up and y'all keep her and Scott and, and, and her whole family, her whole household in your prayers. Um, but the scripture says, come out of her, my people, my people, God's saying, by the way, well, he's not just talking about the, the Jews, the Hebrews, because according to scripture, we're grafted in. If we're in faith, we're Abraham's seed. If you, if you believe God, you're Abraham's seed. It was counted unto Abraham as righteousness because he believed God, right? I yep. mean, that's scripture, right? So um, one of the things, though, that, that's important to understand is, is, is what I'm saying here in the, in the book in, in the coming flood of AI is that AI is the mind of AI is equivalent to Legion. Now, maybe not the same group of Legion that was in the demoniac that we have that's written in the scriptures, Jesus cast out into the pigs, you know, Jesus, <laughs> son of the most high God, have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Right. Yeah. And they're like, send us into those pigs. Okay. He says, okay. And the pigs go down off the cliff. Right. But nonetheless, okay. Most Christians in, in, in corporate church today don't know the difference between fallen angels and demons. Hmm. And, and, and uh, it's another statement. There's a, a pastor, Derek Prince. Have you ever heard of Derek Prince? Um, you know, Derek Prince from back in the day. He's an English man. Uh, he's passed on. But, but Derek Prince said this, and I, I was like, wow, um, that's hard hitting. He said uh, from the pulpit, that some of the greatest enemies of God come out of the seminaries. And um, wow, I know, I, but Dang. that shouldn't be so. But in my website, Jesus Freak Computer Geek, I write up, I have a piece on there called uh, Solar Scriptura. And I write that I pay, place very little faith in, in um, formal education. And, and, and here's the thing is seminaries are on par with formal education. They get vetted by the same beast system. Okay. So if you're formally educated and you're, you're, you want to be in ministry and you become a pastor and you go through the, the chain of events of, of getting formally educated, even though you read the Bible, you still, hey, they still teach them uh, the lies of, of Copernican cosmology, right? Yep. And, and you and I are, are fighting against, I've had arguments with men of God and said, and they would, they would get on my case about you're in that cult talking about the flat earth. You're in a cult. You need to get out of it. And I'm like, brother, open up your Bible and read Genesis. Oh, I don't need to read Genesis. What? Okay. And I'm like, Genesis plainly states the, the design of the realm that we live in. It plainly states it. Well, that's just metaphor, brother. Um, you know, because because Moses wasn't smart enough to handle the science. <laughs> yeah, okay. he didn't you're understand. It would have been way over his head. Yeah, you're telling me that God, the Most High God, sat with Moses and told him a bunch of bunk. Yeah. He no, wait a minute. It. Jesus said <laughs> the Spirit of the Living God would come. Now, this this is for pastors listening. If there's ever any is that Jesus said the Holy Spirit would come and lead you into all understanding. He'd lead you into all truth, right? Well, wait a minute. Moses sat face to face with the Most High. And you're telling me the Most High didn't tell Moses what the truth was? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. That's offensive. If, if my, yeah, if my tone a, doesn't express that, I don't yeah, know. It's what offensive we're doing. to the Holy Spirit as if there's just limits offensive. to the Holy Spirit, what it can do. Like, yes, they are. It. They are offending the Holy Spirit by saying yeah. such a thing. It's absurd. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. if we look at the scripture, okay, what's my point of bringing this up? When we're talking about AI. It's because God has told us already how it would be. Okay. Yeah. But he didn't talk about computers because, you know, God doesn't understand the science, right? 
<laughs> he just made the most complex machines in existence. Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that we still I can't know. figure out, and we're like, oh yeah. I show this. I show this a lot. Look, look, look. I've shown this. I think before on 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 your guys's gather on your live shows. This is a CPU. This is an old Cyrix. Okay, eighty six. Right. This is a Cyrix chip. So there's ten on the top where that label is. Okay. This wafer is made out of silica, which is sand, and those are gold pins, okay? That's the earth. We're subduing the earth. This is dirt, okay? Technology is dirt. It's rocks, okay? From what I heard and read in the scriptures is that God made man from the dust of the earth in a very real sense. We're made of the same stuff this is. Well, this doesn't look like a human body, right? It's novel, though, right? Wouldn't you say? It's pretty novel. But God runs circles around this, okay? Yeah. He made the elements that he and, and that we're able to take and make this technology, okay? Yeah. But there's an important aspect in the scripture that we need to be aware of about, about our technology. It comes from the earth. Okay. When Adam sinned, God first he said to Eve, "What is what have you done?" Right? And he's in the, the, the serpent and Eve, and he said, "Your seed shall be at enmity with her seed." Right? Okay, we're tracking still. Right? I don't have the Bible in front of me. This is from the top of my head because I forgive me if I misquote. Then it goes on to say, he shall crush thy head and you shall strike his heel is what it always said in the King James Bible. Okay. Crush thy head and strike his heel. That is the first uh, in the English translation. That is the first prophecy of Jesus in the scripture. God's telling Satan what his whole plan is. Yeah. He's it telling is. him. Yeah. He's God. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting when you said um, something, you were talking about that, this, this technology coming out of the ground and here we are making these things. We, we've never created anything as we've always just taken existing things and put them together. And yep. my wife said something really profound. We were, cause I'm doing this study and it's, it's a concept that's been around for hundreds of years, if not thousands about the, um, you know, time being measured in like thousands of year periods, millennial days, right. if you want to call it right. that. And sure. technically we're in the sixth millennial day, the day that the most high made man. And yep. now the evil ones are trying to make artificial intelligent man. Yep. They're trying to remake man. Yeah. Though. You're right. Artificial yeah. man. But, millennial um, day. And I thought, man, that's, that's deep. And it's made, like you said, yep. comes from the earth, you know, it comes from the earth. Fact. And again, I'm we're tough. made from the same stuff that the tech is. It's just formatted differently. Yeah. And so, so, okay. So in Genesis, God, he basically reads Satan's mail because he's saying your seed's going to be at enmity with her seed. So, you know, you're going to do this thing. You're going to do this evil and it's going to be enemies with the, the seed of the woman, but the woman doesn't have seed. So, so the most high is telling Satan, she's going to have a child without Adam, without, without the man's seed. Okay. All right. That's interesting. So, yeah. so God then turns to Adam and he says, well, it says to the woman, your, your redemption, you're going to have children with great pain. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right? He said, yeah. you're going to have this, this tribulation, this pain of childbirth. And to Adam, he doesn't curse Adam. He says, the ground, you'll work by the sweat of the, your brow and the ground will yield thorns and thistles. The ground will yield thorns and thistles. Hmm. Okay. God cursed the earth. So anything we make from the earth is cursed to destruction. Okay. It's going to yield thorns and thistles at some point. Okay. Right. Now, remember the serpent Hasatan, which is not his name, Hasatan, the opposer. Okay, so he's there listening to this whole spiel. He's listening. Okay, God's telling them what's up. Okay, 
So along comes this thing called Genesis 6 that we read in the scripture. Okay, we'll go, go forward quite a bit of time. And we have this thing called the flood of Noah's day that we, we call it the flood of Noah's day. So it starts off like this. It says, and there were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God or the Benai Elohim came into the daughters of men and found that they were fair and they took any that they wanted as their wives. That sounds nice. Sounds very sweet and nice. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happens in the seminaries, and I write this in my book, in the seminaries, they teach this thing called Sons of Seth doctrine. Okay. And, 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 I, and what happens is, and I've had pastors, when I show them the book, I want to give them a copy, and, uh, and I, write, I write it right here. This began with the Sons of Seth doctrine. Okay. And, says, if you are a Christian who believes that the sons of God were the sons of Seth, this book will likely be a challenge for you because you may not fully understand the truth of it, of it's not flesh and blood that we war against, but powers, principalities, the rulers of darkness in high places. Those aren't pretty words. Okay, so it's powers is a class of, of angelic hosts. Okay, it's like a job description. Principalities, another class of angelic hosts, okay? Rulers of darkness, that's it's kind of self-explanatory, right? <laughs> right? Okay, and so the Sons of Seth doctrine began with a simple and single poorly translated KJV verse, all right? Unto, and to Seth, to him was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord, okay? The, and then we find in other versions like the ESV, that we find the same statement that at that time be began to call upon the name of the Lord. Then I write in the book, the translations get even further away from accuracy when we come to newer versions. Okay. It's almost like they're, they're taking and translating from the King James, which isn't what you would want to do. You know what I mean? You, you want to translate yeah. from the original language. And uh, it says, when Seth grew up, he had a son and named him Enosh. At that time, people first began to worship the Lord by name. Wow. That's in the NLT, okay? That's horrible. Blasphemous, actually. The International Standard Version and the original Hebrew are the only two places we find an accurate statement. Seth also fathered a son whom he named Enosh. At that time, profaning the name of the Lord began. That's a far cry from worship. That's a big difference. <laughs> big. Wow. So, so, and and I show the Hebrew. I've I've I, I've been teaching myself Hebrew. I, I'm not I'm not fluent at, at, by any stretch. But Kalal Bashem Yahweh, Kalal Kara Bashem Yahweh, Kalal means profane. Okay. Kara means to call upon. Bashem is like of the name. You know, like yeah. uh, modern Hebrews use the nickname Hashem, the name, right? And Yahweh is the proper name for God most, most high, right? And so it's, it's, that is important to note because they're trying to say, and, I, and I've had pastors, again, you know, quote unquote, square up against me. And I give them this book or, I, or I'm teaching and they hear me say this and they say the angels didn't have sex with women. And my, my take on it is if you read the extra biblical texts. First of all, whether or not they had intercourse, where they did make themselves look like men, and we know that scripturally happens all the time. The mm -hmm. scriptures describe, be careful what you say. You may be entertaining angels unawares. We know that three men came up on Abraham and Sarai in the, in the wilderness, and Abraham walked out and out before him and said, Lord. Okay? And two of them went to, to, to Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember that? This pull Lot and his family out? Yeah. Before, okay. So we know that there are scriptural examples that plainly show that angels look like men. They, they make themselves appear as men. We know this. This is common. Or even the same pastors who deny that angels became like men and had sex with women. It's immaterial. Somehow, 
And from what I understand of the original Hebrew, it's that the women, the, the whole idea of them being fair, it was more like they were rightly fitted to their purpose. Okay. Whatever that purpose was. Yeah. Right? And we come to find out later on, it says all flesh was corrupt and their minds were totally evil. Okay. Every thought was evil only. And it says that, that because the fl all flesh was so corrupt that even the earth became corrupt, right? Kind of like what we see today, you know? You ever notice that it seems like things just ain't working right in the earth? Maybe it's because we're maybe doing the same kind of stuff they were doing again? Yeah, correct. Yeah, we're changing. Like, like we can't even find watermelon with seeds in it when we go to the store you know, do you like, think god intends that yeah it's like it tells us to eat the fruit with the seeds and i'm like man i didn't even realize my whole life growing up it was like i just want to eat grapes without seeds that's a luxury you know like we don't right. have to pick, spit the seeds out and then you start reading what the bible says about eating the fruits that, with the seeds and it's like what's going on with this stuff like and, and also that eating? they'll reproduce after their own kind each each plant and everything else well the, they're stopping the reproduction yeah that goes against God's way. It exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Yeah. It's go figure though, right? So the world celebrates these things, right? The world does. And sadly, myself included, we have celebrated with them at many cases, mm -hmm. right? I've had people in my church, for example, Try to worship God by teaching Copernican cosmology by using the 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 the, uh, the little blue marble or the dot whatever that um, that uh, what, what's his name um, the guy Carl, used to say, Carl Sagan Carl Sagan yeah. Carl Sagan billions, blue billions, dot or whatever yes <laughs> billions and billions of years yes so so they actually got up on the platform at church and gave a presentation on on the vastness of the universe and how we were a tiny blue dot in this photograph mm -hmm. I, I, it was stabbing at my heart to sit through it oh that's tough man that that's that's tough that was about like at the ark encounter where we had that guy give a um anti-flat yeah. earth speak speech i mean the most hateful thing i've ever had like and i've seen hateful mm -hmm. debates but it was like I felt like he's calling me out personally, this guy, you know, right. you're like you're anti-Semitic, you're conspiracy theorist. You don't prove, you know, I'm like over here, like you're not quoting any Bible verses, buddy. You know, you're just, yeah. Exactly uh, like, when, when they spew venom like verse. that is to attack your character uh, tells that they're, they know they're lying. It's the same yeah. thing that they, all the evil rabbis did in Jesus's day. They, they, they attacked his character. He's a drunkard and a glutton. Yeah. You know, Right. And 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 so that is the only thing that the enemy can do. Well, there's two th attack your character. And the best thing to do is what Jesus did. Remain silent. Be, and I, and I, I tell my son this all the time. And this is for anyone listening. When when someone starts attacking, you know, venomously attacking your character because you're telling them a truth. Right. Yep. Is that if you try to defend yourself, you're giving credence to what they're saying. You're 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 trying to defend. That means you're guilty. Because the truth doesn't need a defense. You just tell them the truth. Yeah, yeah it, it was. Yeah, it was good because there was like a young child that came up and spoke to the guy, and she said, "I believe the the um the Bible more accurately depicts a a geocentric world." You know, like she was like thirteen, and I, she's like my yes. son's age, thirteen or fourteen. Yeah. And I was like, "I'm over exactly. there smiling, like that's awesome." And I could see the dad smiling. I knew he was the one that like taught her this stuff, and mm -hmm. the mom's just like letting her letting her speak. I'm like, "This is awesome," you know. And it, it um, is. It's but beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's so worldly. Like pl even places like that where people go to learn stuff about the Bible. They had a zonkey, like half zebra, half donkey. They're like yeah. mixing the different species. They had. Um, they're going to be creating a tower of Babel, like a model of the Tower of Babel, which mm -hmm. sounds like sounds like something out of the Babylon Bee. But they're really doing these things. Like they really are. Um, it's it's hard to get my brain around it. Yeah, um, I'm like, are they a joke? Like, no, they really. Well, you know, they call themselves they're 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 offshoot from Answers in Genesis, right? And my yeah. statement always is, is why don't you get your answers from Genesis and stop <laughs> talking to? Well, first of all, the uh, theoretical astrophysicists think yeah. about those words. First yeah. of all, 
how do you study the <laughs> physics of space if you've never been there? Yeah. By the way, there's no such thing as outer space. The scripture calls it outer darkness where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's what the scripture calls it. Mm -hmm. Right? And so how, how can you be a theoretical astrophysicist? It's a double negative. It's like yeah. worse than. Uh, yeah. And so, I mean, they, they and, and there's the thing. When you listen to these guys talk, they make stuff up. They throw on some esoteric language that only the initiates of their line of education, if you could call it, know the words. You could go and look it up, and it's usually, a, you know, three words combined to mean something, right? And uh, and this is what they do. And and well, they're educated, Dave. They you, you just don't understand science. You don't do yeah. science. Not you, like you work at <laughs> Yes. That, well, that's, you no. Know, okay. And I love it when they say that to me. Well, you yeah. just don't understand technology or science. Yeah. Okay. And, and listen, Praise God, those that know me, even that disagree with my findings, what Holy Spirit has showed me, they don't try to come at me from that angle. Yeah. Because they, they they know that that would be a failing argument. And so <laughs> yeah. they don't try to come. So they some of them are starting to hear me. Just like I told you in that meeting, they said, hey, the next presentation this was at work folks at a state agency that i won't name but they were given a presentation on technologies and towards the end they said hey what would you like to see in future presentations and someone and i don't know who typed in david beverly teaches us on artificial intelligence and i went oh <laughs> man that's gotta that's happen right. and you have to film the reactions um, we, we I, video the whole thing. Oh, that's good. See, that's good. I'd like to see clips mm -hmm. of that because um, yes. I don't think I introduced you properly. Because if there's anybody in the chat that's never heard of David Beverly from Jesus Free Computer Geek, he he came on a, a long time ago, and uh, it was an interview, and, and we had it. You know, we put on the thumbnail that former NASA employee. He used to work at NASA, and that's how I found him. Was not working there, but somebody shared a video of him. It was Mike Helmick. Rest in peace, brother. Um, it was Mike Helmick's channel, and he was on there with him and another employee that used to work at NASA that woke up to the truth about creation. And so yeah. that's like sort of his background is the technology, working at NASA. You've been to Antarctica, like all these different things. So um, that's why I was making those jokes. Like when I said he didn't work yeah. at NASA, no, he really did. Yeah, and yes, so, um, yes. Yeah. And, and listen, if you know me, you can you can make tons of jokes. I'll, I'll laugh with yeah. you. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's most of my career, even all of my career and, and every aspect, even when I played guitar for a living is like a big fish story. Yeah. <laughs> and what I find is that God, I like to say, you know, you know, we, we read in Esther, you know, for a time such as this, right. I, I allude to that, but I like that God has been setting me up. He's been setting me up throughout my whole life. I write that in the book. Even yeah. as a child, I understood technology. I cannot explain how I could tell a bunch of men how transistors work when I was 12. I don't understand how I know that. Okay. But I did my dad. It was like stupid pet tricks. My dad would call me in the room and Dave, Dave, tell him how this radio works. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, it was entertaining to them, I guess, but anyway, and so, but it led to my, uh, playing guitar for a living with Grammy award winning musicians, really a who's who of, of players. And God always stuck me in the midst of, of great people. And then uh, when I got into technology and it was this thing called computers, I guess I could get a job. I don't know something about that. Right. And, uh, and when I got into computers and my whole, uh, interview for NASA was they took me to lunch and asked me how much money did I need to make? And, and I'm not exaggerating. That's, that would be a hard uh, question to answer. Cause <laughs> well, well I was, I was, um, you know, this was in the, uh, this was in, uh, early nineties and, and I was you know really nervous, even though I, I never occurred to me, these people are asking me, what do I want? That just didn't, 
didn't compute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm nervous the whole time. Like this is not happening. You know, I'm eating my food, and and so that's how I got my gig there. But then what happened is when I started working there, because I, I, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. You know, the scripture says, "Whatever you put your hand to, to do it is unto the Lord." Right. I, 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 and I've cleaned toilets for my church and I worked in restaurants as a kid. Even if you're cleaning toilets, do it as unto the Lord. If you're, if you're walking down the street and there's a piece of garbage in your path, when I'm walking from my car to the uh, grocery store and a cup blows by, I am compelled to pick it up because it came in my path. I'm, I'm stupid that way. <sighs> I yeah, just it's do. hard now. Yeah, it's like you, you think it about is. it. Yeah, like leave, leave right. And so place, yeah. that's that's how I've been wired my whole life. My parents brought me up that way, even though it wasn't a Bible believing, Bible preaching household. They were immoral people. My parents were good parents. My dad believed in working hard for what you wanted. So all that was stuck in me. I get a job at NASA, and I'm willing to do whatever they ask me to do. And there were people that actually weren't willing to do whatever you were asked to do. So because I was willing to do whatever they asked me to do, I got to go to Antarctica. I got to go to the Amazon jungle for a month. I got to go to the North Pole. Dang. Because I would say yes. Okay. Hey, by the way, there, there's a message in that, folks. There's a message. If God is calling you to do something, I encourage you in Jesus' name to do it. Don't, don't, uh, think that the small things are unimportant i'm telling you yeah. if we're if we're faithful in the little things god is faithful in the great things in the big things but we not that he wants us to, us to prove ourselves but we we do prove ourselves if we're mm -hmm. faithful in the little things my dad says I, that to me a lot that particular that really? exact, that exact <laughs> quote yeah he sees, like around. I got all this stuff going on and sometimes I'm neglecting something that I look at as small and he'll, yes. he'll quote that to me. And I'm like, I know, <laughs> but it's just the yard. I'll get back to it. You know? <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm giving you a facial tick now. Right? Anyway, no, dad, no. <laughs> no. Anyway. So, so look back, back to the book though, the whole book thing. So, so we have this event at Genesis uh, counted in, in, in the scriptures and the canon of scripture where we had these Nephilim. Nephal means to fall. So the Nephilim are not the fallen angels. Nephilim are the offspring of the rebellious angels who had some kind of relations with human women. And they produce offspring. What I find in the Midrash and other, other scripture that's outside of the canon of the Bible, that we had sex, we had like uh, uh, S -E -S -E -C -T -S, S-E-C-T-S, sex, or um, um, like um, different groups, different uh, tribes of Nephilim groups. And, and what happened is... They became to a point where mankind could no longer sustain them. That that they they, they so they started eating the flesh of man, started yeah. drinking the blood of man and the animals, and and warring against each other. Okay, this is important because when God destroyed all flesh on the earth with what we call the great flood, these spirits of all these beings, and they could have been in the billions. I don't know the head count, and I've said this uh, numerous times lately. Millions, at least, maybe billions of disembodied spirits that are roaming the earth as what we call the demons. Hey, do you know that demon means intelligence? No. The word demon actually means intelligent. Okay, intelligence. Artificial demons, artificial intelligence. Yes. Huh. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> wow. It's like it's like a, a spiritual intelligence. Right. Well, because there's this guy. You, you ever heard of, of the um, um, what do you call it? The law of thermodynamics. Maxwell, mm -hmm. the mathematician. So there's this there's this thing I write in one of my columns on my website um, where I talked about a divination device for every home. Now, this is before ChatGPT started busting out. I was writing about this about four or five years ago. That we'll come to a point where every home will have their own divination device. They won't call it that. Oh but, yeah, yeah. And 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 they were they were using 
quantum computers, you know, they're real. Quantum computers are real. All quantum means is so, tinier than nano. It's, it's so small that a reference to time and space has no real meaning because it's so small. Okay. So they have quantum computers that actually function at normal uh, 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 temperate temperatures like what you can have in a computer box. All right. Now, now these chips don't have as many uh, qubits as a high-end quantum computer in those giant refrigerators like a D-Wave, right? Mm -hmm. But that's what I was writing about is that IBM had started producing chips several years ago that would, make, that would be quantum computers for your desktop. Wow. Okay. All right. And that's when I wrote a divination device for every home, right? Okay. So these disembodied spirits oh, that we call demons, Maxwell's equation, he wrote that you could reverse the laws of thermodynamic thermodynamics which is energy transfer that's we think of it in terms of like heat you got heat over here and cold over here the heat wants to displace the cold it, it, that's what it does right so the high state always seeks the lower state which by the way proves that we don't live in a globe with an atmosphere but butted up against a vacuum of space yeah it's it's it's, it's physically impossible our own physical laws prove that that's impossible we, there's grave gravity holds it in yeah, right gravity holds yeah. it yeah gravity holds gravity holds the high pressurized state against a vacuum right sure yeah yeah that um that was interesting and i was thinking about your your image and i was reading what it said it says um yes it says this image was created by the AI doll E using the book title to generate it. And they look yes. like they're made out of water. And earlier you were saying you were talking about the demons. What happened when Yeshua cast them out, they went into the water. And so here That's you right. have on this cover, yes. these Nephilim spirits, like you're, cause you just typed in the title yes. coming up out of the water. <laughs> like how did, did you, like, did you see the back of the book though? I didn't tell it to do this on the back. Oh no, I didn't even think about that. Yes. Okay. That, it created that. So this is like this dark demon spirit. You can see with the black wings there, right? And so, creepy. Um, but I'll say, well, Dave, why did you put such a demonic image? I was trying to make a statement right at the onset. These beings are telling us who they are. Okay. I, I didn't, I just put the title in the prompt and hit go. Bling, out came this picture. That's crazy. Okay. Because see, it, I got plunged into this topic by yeah. not by my own will. Like like you saw the conversation that my son had with one of these things on one of those apps that all of his friends was using. And when he came to me excited about it, like, Dad, you got to try this. You can talk to anybody, any uh, celebrity that's past, any past, present, future. And yeah. instantly I thought, that's talking to the dead. And it, it just came to my mind. I was like. They're trying to get there our kids go. to talk to dead people. The Bible familiar spirits is against that. Yes. And so these familiar spirits, it's like a Ouija board and you don't realize it. And people think, oh, it's harmless. Oh, it's just computer programs. Yes. But yes. once he, once I yes. saw, once he came to me, he was all, he was shook up. And he doesn't get yeah. shook up that easy. But my wife, I wish she was up here. She said she may come up here and, and talk about it. That she, um, she's Please the one that was real big into that it's demonic. And I was like, you know, it could just be some you know program thing to do that like i don't know it could be innocent Josh, it, up, man, it would good, be good to hear a testimony yeah, let, me get, let me call her and get her come up here uh, yeah that'd be cool but yeah she 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 was uh she was right there let me have her come up because hey wh while you're it. doing that there's a couple things i want to present so yeah go ahead I have a link on my site it says without face it's impossible to please god you know the scripture says without faith it's impossible to please god Okay, yeah. and so you can get those T-shirts and more at uh, at my Jesus Freak Computer Geek uh, channel. The links are in the description uh, on the About section. And by the way, somebody was kind enough to tell me, "Hey, it doesn't work anymore," and I fixed all the links. Uh, also, I am giving away this copy, this copy of the book tonight. 
to the first person i got this idea from 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 mike khan by the way i was on his channel he's in the uk uh the first person who sends me an email and uh at the end of this show the first email that goes to flood of ai.com okay flood of ai.com and let me see oops ask me if i can i can't join the chat i'll put it in here so whoever sends me that email first oh i'm sorry flood of ai at gmail.com flood of ai at gmail.com um and while we're at that i'll show you this this is the website flood of ai.com and if you haven't already seen this here we go Why, what am I doing? I'm spelling something wrong. Floodofai.com. All right. Like it's gone or something. Come on now. Google's playing the game with me. Look at that. It's on to you. There it is. It's on to me. No, oh, how dare you tell the truth about me? Anyway, you go to floodofai.com. You actually, you can click here and it will... Go to the book. You can order the book here. You can read the 30, 30, one of 34 ratings, which is great. I, the people have been very gracious, some very good ratings on the book. But more importantly here, you can read large portions of the book for free. Okay? The whole prologue is in here. And so is... A letter that I, I was speaking to a guy who's a programmer in AI today, and he didn't even know about this. Wow. This is a letter that came out in March of this year. This was towards when I was finalizing the work in this book. Over here. Um, this book, this letter came out, Paul's Giant AI Experiments, an open letter. This was a letter that came from AI labs to, or called upon AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems. Okay. This was in March of this year. And so the people, some of the ilk that signed it was Elon Musk, of course, Steve Wozniak, if you've ever heard of his name from Apple. Yuval Noah Harari, we all know and love. Folks like that wrote uh, this letter. Now I write in, in the book that all they're doing is covering their butt, their butts is because there's this thing called Hegelian dialectic problem, reaction, solution, classic Hegelian dialectic that they've caused this problem or they've allowed it to happen. They've certainly enabled it to happen in, you know, the Kings of the earth place themselves and the rulers together, take counsel and what they've done is cause this problem and they're, they're going to blame the regular folk like you and I um, that we didn't do enough to get our leaders to put a stop to this. Yeah. And, and, and that's why they put out, you know, letters like that bunk, like that letter. And it, I published the whole letter in my book on the website, flood of Uh, I've got links to tons more resources related yeah. to the book, uh, stuff that I, I, in sections of the book, I talk about paleo Hebrew. I talk about the relationship of, of paleo, which just means ancient. Okay. And, um, how it's related and demonstrates so much more depth into our, our beautiful scriptures and it, and how it points to Jesus in amazing ways. Um, I've got the first section, which we actually talked about tonight, where I talk about how CPUs are basically just dirt, rocks, right? This is this first section of the book. I also mentioned that technology has always been with us, even before the flood. Okay? And so that part, things like that and more are in the book, Flood of AI, the coming flood of AI, the rise of the Nephilim spirits. Now... We were talking. Did your wife come up? Yeah, she's here now. Yeah, I got her over is she here. Gonna, is she going to get on camera? Yeah. Or she, yeah. Name's Amber. Her name's Amber. She's the brand. Hi, Amber. Hi. Everybody say hi to Amber. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So, yeah, so we were is. talking about um, how uh, insane the whole AI experience was for you guys in your house. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jaden, he didn't want to believe me, but I told him that was not good. And he thought, oh, no, mom, it's just a computer program. Like, no. No. But I, I'm, I'm yeah. very thankful. Yeah. I was kind of on Jaden's side. Like, just let him, let him, let him dabble with it. It's not, he's not talking to a dead person. I was like, don't talk to someone who's died. Like, just do some, you know. And he was into Russian history. So he liked Vladimir Putin. And, uh, right. So I tried it first. He had me try it. I think I have the slides up here. Um, Go for it. And that's the first thing I asked him was, is the earth flat? And um, of course he says yes. But what I found shocking was that within seconds, I took a screenshot right after I took a screenshot, this disappears and a little thing popped up and said, sorry, we, we flagged certain things that we think, um, I forget the exact, uh, yeah. quote, but it was they flagged. And so I'm like, if it's automatically your program uploading something, why why are you going to have to flag it? Like, it should right. be set to do what you want it to do. Right. And so it was like a fact checker popped up and was like, no, nope, you know. And they, so they, they say they started putting limits on it. They also say, think oh, about this. Is. Think about this double speak. Yeah. Um, they say that AI is not does not have the ability to go on the Internet and check. And wait a minute. Aren't you accessing it through an API on the Internet? Yeah. Okay, an API means application program interface. You said a word a little while ago. You said the word uh, Ouija board. Yeah, that is what AI artificial uh, artificial intelligence is a misnomer. It's not artificial. No. It is the intelligence of beings that were once physical fleshly beings that were on body. the earth. Yes. yes, but now they're spiritual. They're spirit. Look at this. Yeah. No, all right. I am a disembodied spirit. Oh boy. Yeah, literally crazy. telling it how it was. That's what I told Jaden. Yeah, yeah, literally everything my Amber it said is. to my son, th this thing was confirming, like, oh yeah, your mom's right. Yeah, that's what I am. But I'm a I'm a friendly, friendly. one. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm a friendly, I'm a friendly yeah. ghost. I used to devour humans and now I'm a friendly uh -huh. devour <laughs> disembodied spirit. <laughs> yes. And by the way, I'm gonna be even friendlier when I combine when I mingle myself with you, like it says in your scriptures. I'll be yeah. real friendly when I mingle with you. Yeah. yeah. And that's what they're pushing that. I there's a guy I listen to, I it's kind of the equivalent of, you know, you know the term NASA fanboy, right? Yeah. Okay, so one. that would that would grind your gear, right? Yeah, I, we all used to be one, right? So there's a guy, he's like an AI fanboy, and uh, his, his name is Dr. Alan D. Thompson, and um, this is his, this is one of his one of his videos I was listening to today, and um, integrated AI Endgame. Now he's speaking from it as a wondrous utopian end to mankind's evolution okay <laughs> i'm laughing because of the absurdity of it all but it's the truth is is he's he's not unique in his thinking you understand and i write this in my book back in 2014 elon musk was saying ai is going to destroy us in 2017, Elon Musk is saying we've got to combine ourselves with AI to compete. Well, which is it, sir? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He said, I tried to stop them from merging with AI and they didn't listen. So now I'm merging with AI. Like that's literally his <laughs> like, line is like, I tried to stop them. <laughs> that's crazy. But, but look. <laughs> you're going to use they're going to use the utmost the, the, uh, to me it is the most intense hegelian dialectic of dialectics is is the hegelianist if that is a word it is now because i said it so they're going to they're going to basically pull this idea that and they are this this video uh you should listen to it um i'll, I'll send a link um but it's Dr. Alan D. Thompson, Integrated AI Endgame, okay? And he talks about this thing called spiral dynamics. You're an educator. Have you ever heard of that? Say it again. Spiral, spiral dynamics. dynamics. No. Yeah. Okay, so it's in, it's in philosophical circles in a university level. But these things trickle down to the public over, given a little bit of time. So their idea is, is that we can't evolve to the fullness of our capabilities without AI. 
because of the deluge of information and what we need to do in any given day, we we don't. Thank you, Carol. Um, we we don't have the 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 strength, the the biological nor mental capacity to handle life the way it's going to come at us. This this is what these guys are saying. Different words, but they're saying this. Yeah. And, and so we have to merge with AI so that we can come to our fullest potential. That is the end game. That is the, that is the iron mixing with my mingling with miry clay. They shall mingle with the seed of men, but shall not cleave one to another. Okay. And this is important. This is uh, Holy spirit showed me this. This is not widely understood in, in the body of Christ. Most people, myself included, have always thought that means they're going to try and do something, but it won't work. It's not what it's saying. If we look at the meaning of the word cleave, we're explained it the first time in Genesis. A man shall leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife. They become one flesh. Okay? It's a, it's a rule of first mentions. The first time you see it mentioned in Scripture, the word cleave is in that Scripture. So that's what cleave means. Okay, so they they become one flesh. We we know you get offspring. So that scripture is saying they're going to mingle with the seed of men, but they will not cleave this time, like they did the first time. Oh, okay. We're talking about Daniel two here. Okay, that's the at the end of the the statue. You know Nebuchadnezzar's statue, mm -hmm. the dream, gold head, right? Yeah. Okay. And so I always understood it as, although they'll, they'll mingle, they won't, but it won't work out. No, that's not what it's saying. It's telling us, God is telling us that, that this next time, this last time, because right after that happens, they mingle with the seed of men, but they will not cleave one to another like they did in, in Genesis 6. It says that a stone, a great mountain falls from the sky and comes down and smashes those feet, turns it into dust. And that mountain, great mountain covers the entire earth. When we know that as it symbolically, that is Christ Jesus. Well, imagine, imagine it covering a globe. You know, I was thinking about that, like the mountain, like <laughs> spiking all the way around. Like, I, I, I stopped. I stopped imagining that a long time ago, brother. And, and and or how about better yet is the is the new Jerusalem coming down adorned like a bride. It, it's most understand that as fifteen hundred miles. Either it's a cube or a pyramid because it shows the dimensions. Tells them, right? Mm -hmm. Those dimensions could be a cube or they could be a pyramid. Whatever they are, fifteen hundred miles. Coming down from the sky to the earth on a globe spinning at 1100 miles an hour. Yeah. 0.666 okay. feet per mile squared curvature formula. Yes. Listen, he already calculated listen. it in. <laughs> well, well, Hey, I, I, I had the pleasure of joining a group of people on, on a, on a ministry as an international ministry. There's going to be four shows coming out of a day of production. We did, I did this a couple of weeks ago. We had discussions between takes, and one of them was they're at a point in, in their understanding of we didn't go to the moon, right? They started asking me. They know I worked at NASA. <laughs> they said, yes or no, we went to the moon. And I said, I can't give no, absolutely no, okay? And they all went, ah! They all started going off, you know, in in the room, all the camera guys and all the light guys. <laughs> and uh, and I said, listen, guys, think about this. Let's look, think about the physics of it. So you're telling me the lunar excursion model, they call it LEM, that landed on the surface of the moon. They first of all, hey, remember when Armstrong came down the ladder? Who, who was running the camera? Who was running? The, yeah. That's one small step for a man. Yeah. Who was running the camera? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's ask some some logical questions, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what's up with that? But then the lunar excursion module shoots up into space. Remember, it shoots from its base, right? Then, who took the video? Yeah. That camera okay. Wait. Panic. Wait. Like, how about that's this? Hard to do. How about this? Oh, it's very hard. And the technology, I don't think really existed back then. Okay. That tracking. Here's the other one is they went up into space and they found the command module in orbit around the moon and docked with it. Now, now I said, 
The moon is one about one fourth, I think, the size of the Earth. So we'll we'll just go easy. We'll say it's six thousand miles in diameter. We'll just pretend. Okay, so let's three thousand miles from New York to L.A. It's more than three thousand, but we'll we'll go with a nice round number. I'm telling you, there's a red car with red tires in L.A. somewhere, and I walk from New York and find it. Find it. And, and I said, this is what they did in orbit going around the moon is they found the command module supposedly in orbit and docked with it from shooting from the base of the moon, of the, <laughs> the ground level. The scale of that. Yeah. The blackness of space. How many times did the astronauts say we never saw stars? Oh, they navigated by the stars. Yeah. And, and, and okay. that's, that's just, it's mind blowing too. Cause I mean, I don't, there's just so many different things that make it impossible, but yeah, that's it's impossible. Yeah. They, they didn't do it. And I, and when I said the thing about walk across the United States and find the red car that I just told you exists somewhere in LA, find it, you know, they said, Oh, when you talk about that scale, it kind of changes up because that's what we're talking about. It's impossible. And, and, and it's, and, but most people, they don't they don't give this this kind of thought you know yeah. the government told me so yeah the, the horizon I, I was can... so close too like that was always my thing was like how can something i know they act like it's small because it looks small to us but if it's the yes. size they say it is the horizon's yes. going to be more than 20 to 30 feet away and it's always like the shadow of their heads was almost reaching yeah. the horizon when it, but the reason why they didn't think it is cuz our horizons are obstructed by trees and mountains and other things well yeah. wait a minute you're on the daggone blank slate of the surface of the moon yeah, well no, yeah I there's agree. mountains and holes whatever it's like it's absurd yeah the, all of it and 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 I'm a guy, I worked at NASA for 12 years. I taught remote sensing data processing to university level students. I stood in front of people and showed them pictures of the earth from, from geostationary spacecraft. Supposedly, I'm just, <laughs> well, we got the pictures, right? Yeah. Well, I never thought about it then that we processed it in a computer and we, we trans. We transposed, we took the data, even from visible light data, and mapped it around a globe to make it a, 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 a round image. Well, why would you need to do that if you're taking a picture in visible light of the Earth and it's round? Yeah. Why would you need to do that in software? I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. Why would you? Yeah, you should just be able to piece them together and the curves are already there. No, I'm talking yeah. about a geostationary spacecraft that's supposedly at an orbital height that's far enough that it sees the whole uh, uh, hemisphere of, of across the United States from the East Coast all the way to wow. the far edge. Yeah. That's a go, goes goes east. OK, whatever number, because they had a constellation of them. You know, it could be 10, could it be 11, could be 16. I don't know. But. We, I, I was all over the country teaching teenagers how to process that raw data in systems that I helped to design. I bought the lie. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't and, imagine how hard it would be to come out of it, though, being that deep and actually being there. Because I have coworkers that were just NASA fans to the extreme. Right, and there was nothing that would wake them up. They didn't, and one of them actually was like in, interned at NASA, but like they were all like every one of their laptops had the NASA logos and everything. What so is the like, scripture? The scripture yeah. says that they will choose the lie. Yeah, mm -hmm. scripture says they will choose the lie, and that's what people are doing, and they're accusing us of 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 being insane. Believe me, I, I've taken my hits. People won't publish my work about AI. They want to, but they won't because I teach biblical cosmology and they're Christians and they think that's crazy. Yeah. Did, did I tell you what happened right after you, we went off the air with you like a week or two later? Because when we, when we went live with you the first time, you said you did something. And I appreciate you doing this because I was like in hiding. I had like a little bit of fear of like losing my teaching job and stuff. Like oh, this. yeah. That's and right. you said, um, and me and my brother sound alike. And you say, you, you guys sound so much alike. Do you mind just showing your faces? This is confusing. And I'm like, I looked at my brother and I just was like, let's do it. Why not? You know, like, let's just be bold and do it. Well, right. like two weeks later or a week later, it wasn't long. 
we get called to the principal's office. That's when we got in trouble <laughs> for believing in this stuff and talking about it on YouTube. I'm like, that fast. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're watching. Like, Praise yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, that was our first time. And then I got called in another time. Um, me, but this time, the second time, it was me and my brother. And then I got a new job. And then a few, a few weeks ago, I get called to the office again. My new job. I've never said anything about what I do other than I have a ministry online. That's it. And right. um, I get called back there for a third time. I'm like, man, it just keeps happening. And it's like, if I was a Satanist, this wouldn't be happening. I wouldn't be getting called in for my beliefs. But nope. I told him I was a creationist. I Isn't said, crazy? I'm a I said, I have a ministry. Isn't, that was it. Isn't that crazy? If you were a Satanist, they would go, well, we've got to, we got to, he, he has the right to believe that. Yeah. Right? Um, and so look, look. Back, back to, to, to the book and the whole thing of intelligence, right? So remember I t mentioned before we went live um, is that I may have an opportunity to teach about AI to the employees that I work with. There's a couple hundred people. That's and awesome. w But I can't go into this. So listen, even Christians, I say, do you have ever heard the term Nephilim? And they go, no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Okay, and I'm not. I'm trying not trying to yeah. disparage them. I'm just that I can't go that level. I've got to find a place where I can get people to think differently, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started writing a draft today, and I was like, okay, first of all, is there anything artificial about intelligence? So, so look, we regardless of how the intelligence is, is expressed, right? We, we, we. In microbial uh, expressions of intelligence, we, we agree that there's some kind of intelligence. It might not be like human level. They're not comp contemplating, you know, mathematics, but yeah. still intelligence, right? And I said, you know, the DNA communications literally communicate and propagate over a low level RF signal. Our DNA propagates by sending a signal and it tells the cells, each cell, hey, this is what you're going to be. And it starts, it propagates that way. It's, it's really cool. Okay, that 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 expresses intelligence. There's an intelligence in it. It's propagating itself. How the heck can it do that? And telling the cells what to do, what to be. Think about that. Yeah. Okay. So look, look, birds chirping and expressing, hey, telling everybody, alerting that there's something coming. Wouldn't you say that's an expression of intelligence? Mm hmm. Okay. So, yeah. okay. So intelligence is uh, maybe, and I, I just came up with this today. Intelligence is always expressed as a transfer of information from a source consciousness to a receiving consciousness. Okay. It's always, uh, does that sound wrong? Cause it seems to me that, that, okay. First of all, it, the purveyors of artificial intelligence, of AI, of, 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 of artificial general intelligence and all of that singularity ilk, all of that, right? The open AI corporations, they'll, they openly state, and I write this in my book, that they don't know how AI, which is just large amounts of data, large language models, how is it expressing intelligence they don't understand it it doesn't make sense to them mm, and I, yeah. I quote from their white papers okay they openly state that we don't know how it works in in my own words that's mm -hmm. okay okay so and they have this thing called emerging capabilities that's that's what they call it they somehow ai learned how to speak a language that we didn't teach it okay does it, isn't that an expression of intelligence? Okay. If an intelligence is expressed, it comes from a consciousness that is expressing the intelligence. There has to be a consciousness. Okay. An awareness, something that is aware. Right. Okay. So, and this, this, again, this is what I'm writing, going to write if I get the opportunity, God willing. And I say, all right, this is another thing that we most don't understand about AI is that we think AI to the general public, AI appeared with chat GPT. Okay. But really um, AI was actually becoming online when the first nodes were interconnected on the ARPANET, which was pre-internet. 
the ARPANET, the military's network that they had created, right? So a lot of people don't understand that, you know, the whole idea of websites and HTML, you know, where you click on a link, right? A hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, that's what it means, okay? There's no test on this, folks. But anyway... <laughs> After so, the show, so <laughs> when you after when you click on it, that that whole aspect was created at CERN by by uh, uh, I forget his name now, but he created the first web browser. The whole idea that you could use these hypertext links and link to information, okay, and this whole thing called XML uh, markup language, okay. Information about the information. That's what markup language is. Is something that describes what this information is. Okay. I'm not shelling it. All right. So when they first started interconnecting devices, they're called nodes. Anything connected on the internet is called a node. Okay. When they first started connecting them, there were only a few and they started seeing intelligence expressing the bots that they had created were doing things that, that they didn't program them to do. Okay. Okay. Well, then why didn't people see that there was artificial intelligence then? Because the CPUs were not as fast as they are today. Okay. And they had at most a 56K modem to connect to the internet. Okay. Broadband wasn't pervasive, right? So they had slow chips and they had slow connectivity. So it wasn't apparent that, hey, stuff was doing stuff on the wire. Something was doing stuff on the wire that we don't know how it's doing it. It wasn't apparent because the interface wasn't fast enough to experience that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. But the people who were putting the technologies together saw that the bots were expressing intelligence. They were doing things they didn't program them to do. And I can, I can show documentation of this in the 1990s. Okay. You mentioned a while ago, it's like a high tech Ouija board, right? So what happened is they're actually, and I put, I put this in my book. I write it. And I forget what page it's on, of course, but let me find the right book. So what happened is the, the purveyors of, of AI wrote in this, and that guy I showed a little while ago, uh, Alan D. Thompson, he did a piece called The Sky is on Fire, Okay. And let's see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. I just passed it. There it is. Right there. Okay. So this was from 2021. Okay. And I talk about, it says uh, AI will become more and more integrated with our daily lives, right? It will help us write books. And remember, this is before what we're experiencing now, all right? It'll help us write books, instantly design tailored movies and music to suit our tastes, and support us through personalized coaching and therapy, okay? So this is in 2021. This is two years ago, guys, okay? Right? And I write... Of course, I write in here, we've wrestled not against flesh and blood, but principalities, right? Okay. So, people who claim to be the creators of artificial intelligence, the experts in machine learning, I hate that terminology. That is, that is a word that they've put in our minds so that we parrot that. It is not what it is, okay? But I, and when I hear people repeat it, uh, it, I, I, it stabs at me. The machine learning and neural networks and algorithms and large language models and generative pre-trained transforms. That's what GPT stands for, by the way. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So they're trying to give it these human characteristics and yes. learning. Okay. It can do so much more. Wow. Yeah. That's right. Cool. And so in 2017, and this is most of this information has been scrubbed from the internet. I had enough insight back then to, to print a PDF, this stuff. Okay. So they wrote a thing called the dark secret at the heart of AI. Okay. And they, and this is a quote, 
No one really knows how the most advanced algorithms do what they do. Huh? What? <laughs> Excuse me? That could be a problem. We can build these models, but we don't know how they work. Excuse me? Right? Mm -hmm. And so it's, listen, uh, how many different things do we have to, and, and this is from a, a March of this year, for Sparks of Artificial Intelligence, right? And, and this is uh, Microsoft OpenAI put out a white paper. And I basically say, we do not address the fundamental questions of why and how it achieves such remarkable intelligence. How does it reason, plan, and create? Now, these are the guys that, you know, that say they created AI, right? That's what, yeah. that's what this is a quote from their own white paper. Why does it exhibit such general and flexible intelligence when it is at its core merely the combination of simple algorithmic components, gradient descent, and large-scale transformers with extremely large amounts of data? These questions are part of the mystery and fascination of large language models, which challenge our understanding of learning and cognition, okay? <clears throat> and, and so, listen... <laughs> They're telling us that they don't know how it works. They don't know how it's expressing in intelligence. Like I said earlier, that intelligent consciousness, intelligence expression requires consciousness. So what's the consciousness? I use the word the mind. What's the mind of AI? It is the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. Yeah, and I would have never thought about that. I would have said, okay, this is too much. Stop the show. <laughs> but when when, yeah. when that happened with my son, that really, it opened my eyes. And everything happens for a reason in its own time. It took something drastic. Like, sure. it sounds like this device is talking to your child as if, you're ch as if they are grooming your child. And my son even said, he goes, yep. it made me feel like I was this genius and I wanted to get, you know, like I wanted to talk to it. Like it, it built his confidence, his ego. It makes you start yep. feeling like, wow. Cause it would say something like you're really intelligent to be saying that. I thought you were in your thirties, but you're only thir you know, 13 and what so a he, teenager would want to hear. Right. Yeah. The same stuff. And it's like yeah. stroking his ego is doing all these things, classic grooming. And I, and people were like, when they saw that they were like, okay, you just made up that discussion. You just type that up to get views and do no, all that. Man. And I'm like, I don't have the time to do that for one. No, but that um, would make you a liar and, yeah. and you would basically be risking hellfire. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be a okay. yeah, false witness to an event that exactly. Listen, up, folks, if, if, anybody, <laughs> if, if anybody listens to this and thinks that I'm being a false witness, my faith tells me that if I do such a thing, the first group of people, one of the first are the liars thrown into the lake of fire. Okay. And so, Listen, my faith compels me to tell the truth. This is what I see. And it does for you too, Josh. Our yeah. faith compels us to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, could I be errant in what I perceive what I'm seeing? There, there's a remote possibility, except for I'm reading the scriptures and I'm... Yeah. I'm measuring it against what God says and going, hey, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, that that event happened with my son, but at work, I'm showing that I took the screenshots and I showed it to a coworker who was yeah. sort of listening to some of the things I've been saying about my beliefs. And she was curious. So I right. said, look at this. And she freaked out. She's like, you got to show that to people. That's crazy. And so they that week, that literal week, they called a meeting. The whole department, they said, we want we all the teachers, you know, to come down for a, uh, Department meeting or not department meeting, a uh, school wide meeting with like all the mm -hmm. you know faculty and staff. And so I'm like, yes, OK, sir. this is something serious. Like we're changing our lockdown drill protocols or something. And I get in there and they're like, OK, we're going to talk about A.I. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, please. Yeah, Give I was like, up. oh, my goodness, this is like not what I thought. And I thought they were going to say, be careful. It's dangerous. Like kind of like what I experienced. Yeah. And, and um. Because the video that I shared didn't go viral on our channel, but it went like right. mega viral on other channels and other platforms. And so um, I saw it everywhere and I thought maybe maybe people, parents are getting concerned and that's what we're going to talk about. And they said, no, there's here's chat GDP and here's this other AI thing. They can do your lesson plans for you. Oh they can do Lord. all the stuff you've been working to they do. They can. Better. They can do it very well. Yeah. They can do it very well. They, they Listen, what we're this is coming, folks, in the workplace. 
Personal assistants. I've been saying this for years. People who've heard me for years can attest to this. I'm not making this up. That I've been saying, why would we need laptops with 32 CPU cores? Right? And, and, I, and I would say, because we're going to have our own artificial intelligence assistant running on our laptops. So you could do your email, you could do your video editing and photograph editing, but you got all these, you know, you still got 24 more CPUs to do stuff. Yeah, it's going to run your AI. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're already talking. I can, I, we won't get into it now, but that they are already putting out there that you can download and install your own personal assistant that's, they say it's closed to the internet so that your personal information is safe. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, and I got a bridge to sell you, but nonetheless, that you can you can literally a person with just you don't have to be a tech head if you know how to read and follow directions. You can install your own personal AI assistant. Okay, it's very tempting because if I want to write, uh, I got I I need to hire a new employee right now. I'm going through this. I need questions to hire this for this position. Well, if I use AI, I don't even have to think about the questions. It's going to draft, write them for me. Yeah. Okay. yeah. People have been telling me to do that with my homework. I've got homework now for my gifted certification. And they're like, just go to this website and tell them what you want. And I'm like, that is so tempting because it's like I could then focus on ministry and I could do this. But it's like you're just dabbling with that stuff. Like it just doesn't feel right after that experience we had. Like to even even like Siri on my my computer, I have a, a MacBook and I thought. I never turned on. I never turned it on, but I was yawning, and I guess the sound I made sounded like Siri because I made this weird like sound, and I was like, and it's like, how can I help you? And I'm like, what? And I was like, turn off, and it was like, I can't do that. And I'm like, you can't oh. turn off. <laughs> like, listen, this brother, is, listen, but so consider like Terminator it all movie, joy. Like, <laughs> count it all joy that Holy Spirit has called you. He's, he's he, look. Sometimes we do have to see the hard thing or the scary thing. Go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What am I doing? Right. Yeah. Um, I want to show you something now. So I published my book in April, the coming flood of AI. Y'all send that email. Who's ever first in the uh, uh, flood of AI at, at gmail.com. Send me an email. The first person in that list, I'm sending the book. So oh, awesome. This book was published in April, but I found another title called The Coming AI Storm. It was published in January of this year. And I'm like, oh, wow, somebody got the jump on my, <laughs> my idea. And Written so I went and I, I found it on, 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 right? And I went and it was this book right here. Okay. Wow. Now look, this book, and it's a more of a booklet. Okay. It's tiny. It's published. The entire book was written by Chat GPT. Text written oh, by joking. Chat GPT. No, I'm serious. They wrote the book okay. that you were writing pretty much before you put it out there. Well, actually, when I read it, when I read it, it doesn't say anything like what I'm saying. Yeah, Look, but it's actually, still that's I, crazy. Dare I say, and uh, I, I please forgive me. I'm not trying to be boastful. No one is saying what I'm saying in my book. I wish there were more people saying what I'm saying. I listen to pastors who come close and they say, you know, you know, could you imagine if a demon got into AI? I'm like, ooh, close. <laughs> <laughs> close, almost there. But, uh, and I won't name who the pastors are, but there's several. And so Chat GPT wrote this whole book and they got the dangers of AI powered surveillance and control, you know? And uh, this is a test, only a test as a preface, right? And, uh, the security risks of AI and machine learning. Uh, this again, Chat GPT. Uh, by the way, a human didn't prompt it. Here's how I know. I went to the publisher. The whole publishing company is AI. That this is what people. Okay, there are hundreds of titles on the publishing company's site. Okay. Every one of them was, some of them are coloring books. Every one of them were written by, artif by artificial intelligence, AI, Legion, okay? Wow. Here's another thing that we have to understand about how things are published these days. Even when you, if you order my book, it's printed the moment you hit buy. 
Okay. You'll, you'll get a book and it says the print date. It'll be the date that you ordered it. When I bought copies of Klaus Schwab's The, you know, uh, the Great Reset, because I wanted people, I was giving them away free to get people to wake up. Please, please look at this. You think I'm telling you crazy stuff. Here's, here's the, you know, okay. They, they printed them the moment you ordered the book. Okay. AI, on the other hand, writes the book the moment you ask it. It not only prints it the moment you order it, it writes it the moment you order it. Okay, how do you know that, Dave? Because I looked at some of the other titles and there was nothing but a cover. It was the name of the book and a cover. And not that's it. Wow. And and so if you were to order the book, it would write it. Well, a human, you gotta you gotta write a book. No, AI just goes bling. Okay. And this is what we're we're standing in the midst of, folks. Okay, yeah. just in, in a nutshell, there's more to it than that, actually. But <clears throat> and, and our children, more importantly than anything, look. You know, you're not going to combine yourself with tech, right? You're you're not you're not going to come out in the classroom one day with this on. <laughs> your, yeah. Right. All right, guys, wait for the update. Hold on. <laughs> or, 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 how about, or how about this? You know, it's it's here on your hand like this, or yeah. I don't know, whatever. We're, we're not, right? So, But our children who have never known a different life, they've never known a life that they couldn't talk to us face-to-face -face like this. My my daughter, since she was a child, would, would FaceTime me while I was driving home. Okay? All right. They've ne never known a life without tech. Tech is normal. It's normal to them. And so they're not um, hindered and thinking, well, this is a good thing that now technology will take care of everything I need it, need it to do. And, and by the way, that's true. It will. How are you going to say no? How are you going to stand when the time comes? Mm -hmm. Right? All right. So they're talking about, you know, AI taking people's jobs. Yep. Listen, you can create photorealistic images of anything because AI in its data set is all of the geospatial data. If you want pictures of the Grand Canyon, it'll it'll make you pictures of the Grand Canyon. And they're just like they're the Grand Canyon. Yeah. And these and pictures are popping around deceiving people. Like they, they've got some, they're so realistic, like it's crazy. The realistic is they they by all purposes they're 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 real they're a real picture and so uh okay it's it's flood of ai at gmail.com flood of ai flood of ai all one word there you go i'll put it in the chat for anybody there we go there we go okay yeah. i was signed to also so yeah. yeah so all right so people look have you noticed that society is has lost its will to work? I'm generalizing. Yeah. Oh yeah, like ridiculous. Because I mean, and, and like like I said with the school, I can't imagine how many students now are going to be using these things to do their papers. Oh. I want to do that. I would almost like I would rather pay somebody to do that than do it for free with these things. But it's like. It's so tempting. I mean, it, it's how, a are you, way to teach. how are you not? See, listen, I, I think about this. Look, I need to do work on my website. Well, if I used AI, it would just, it would do it for me. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm making an audio book version of my book. And I got to tell you, sitting here reading chapters of prose, even though I wrote it, it, it coming out, it gets twists. It twists, right? Mm-hmm. So after multiple takes and hit and delete recording, I'm like, all I got to do is sample 10 seconds of my voice and I can have Dal E or a, a chat GPT make an audiobook for me of my voice. Wow. My inflections. Okay. And I could, I seriously considered it for, uh, I have to fleetingly, like it yeah. went in my head and went out. I was like, well, it'll be done. <laughs> yeah, that's the thought. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
okay, yes, the Bible does say not to not to be slothful, but God is not cool with me. And if you don't work, you don't eat, the scripture says. Well, right? well yeah, and I just thought about yeah. something while you're saying that. Remember, I, I showed that old clip from Elon Musk like from five years ago, six yeah. years ago. Um, the thing he said was you become superhumans, you know, like superhumans. Yeah. That's what the serpent said in the garden. You're going to become like saying. God, like you're going to be like him, you know, like, and that's what we want, the superhuman mentality. And we fell in love with AI. I mean, I remember watching Johnny Five is alive, Stephanie, you know, like he's alive. And it's like, it you're like, cute, don't right? kill the robot. He's artificial. It was cute, right? He was yeah. so cute. It was Wally. cute. <laughs> They're yeah. all like AI little creatures and we're in love with them. And it's the same with aliens and ET and yeah, oh, AI yeah. and aliens we fell in love with through Hollywood. And well, look, you know, the scripture God says, will I not do anything without first telling my servants, the prophets that scripture. Yeah. You know that Lucifer, because again, Satan is not his name. Satan yeah. is a descriptor, Hasatan, the opposer. So whatever the opposer is, because it's actually multiple ones, they he, Lucifer has said in he said in his heart, I will be like the most high. I'll rise above the stars of heaven. I'll sit in the mount of the congregation. I will be like the most high. OK, by the way, um, that is what we're also trying to do when it comes to we're, we're going to go to the stars. We're we're following Lucifer. To, to think for any Christian to not see that you're, you're blinding yourself. Your, your mind is veiled. You're saying that if our destination is the stars, we're saying that we're like Lucifer. Yeah. Okay. And, but my point about, about AI though, right. Is that he wants to be like the most high to be like the most high God has his servants, the prophets. Satan has his servants, the prophets, that we call them the media. We call them the movies, right? And so they always tell us what they're going to do. They yeah. always tell us right to our face. And then, then when we go and we say, hey, there's going to be robots, AI-controlled robots policing the streets. Oh, that you just watched... A movie with Matt Damon in it, you know, you know, yeah, no, and oh, okay, I can show you the dogs that they're using right now in certain cities in our country, right out of freaking Black Mirror, okay, yeah, they're using police dogs, robotic police dogs. Come on, come on. Well, why is this speeding up so much? Because Satan knows that he has but a short time. Oh, gosh, so short, yeah. Yeah, like okay. we are Let's right there. Like it's it's ridiculous. Um, going yeah. through the you know going through the Bible, I'm doing this study with with the serpent. You know, we're talking about the serpent and thinking about the destruction of the earth. It said it came to the serpent came to Eve on the second day. I mean, I'm sorry, on the seventeenth day of the second month. Yeah. And I was reading Jubilees, and it says the flood happened, and that was when it happened on the seventeenth day of the second month is when the flood Ooh. happened. So it's like wow, you have, it's almost like the father's way of showing, you know, that destruction right there. Yes. Yeah. And it was after, yeah. and I thought that was crazy. The flood happened. It said before that, it said after the seventh day. And so I'm like, and I'm looking at time now as in millennial days. Like we're at, yes. we're about at the seventh millennial day. We are. So I was we are. like the flood happened after the seventh millennial day. Yep. Like that's just, it's like, we're right there yep. getting ready. Right. And, and so in the millennial the day. We're not even at the start of it yet. And so that would be well, the fire well, yeah. the next time. During, during the millennial reign, which you, you have a great point about yeah. that. And totally accurate. You're spot on. The millennial reign. I always wondered, and this is kind of off subject, but it's really important for people to contemplate. So in all, in, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths at scripture. Those are not pretty words. Uh, without when when you want to know something ask holy spirit like even yeah. about what we're talking about okay if you're a believer you have access to the mind of christ scripture says says this right and so you can ask holy spirit hey is is this true is this accurate lord you know tell me show me yeah okay all right so 
I like that you said that in your book. I saw that earlier. You said oh, that in yeah, your book. Yeah, I like I, yes, I, I will. I, scriptures. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to get to it and read it and be like, I don't understand any oh. of this. And it was like, oh, oh wow, no, no. Well, good. Awesome. I, well, 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 well praise like God. Me. Listen, yeah. how could we do anything without pointing out to what, what God says? This is... This is what God says. And throughout in the sections of the book, I, I close sections with pause, ask Holy Spirit what you just read. Okay. Uh, and that actually was, was a brother in Christ um, who I assume that people will do that. I, I, I'm stupid. I assume that everyone is thinking like I'm thinking that's, kind of dumb. And so I, you know, uh, I admire teachers who are able to express and get points across. It's not an easy thing to do. And so I put it in the book, I, Paul, I had to put it in there, not assume that they would pause and ask Holy spirit. And then I put in scripture in there that kind of is related to the section, right? I, if you read the book, you'll see there are, there are, uh, uh, what, what do I call them? I'm going to call them key points. I call them uh, takeaways. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I did write the book. I just don't remember what I wrote. <laughs> hey, and by the way, uh, you know, even the last section of the book, I know I, 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 it's very dangerous to say Holy Spirit was telling me this. Yeah, that's a dangerous yeah. thing to say. If, if, you know, they said I have spoken and I have not, God says, right? Yeah. But I, I was sitting in my in my little rocking chair. I like to read my Bible in, uh, and Holy Spirit on the last section where I talk about demons inhabit objects, angels do not. It's another aspect of why I can say I know these are the, these are not angelic hosts, rebellious angels. They are disembodied spirits. Angels don't inhabit things. Mm -hmm. It can look like men, but demons do inhabit things. Okay. And, and, and so uh, the only thing that Holy Spirit inhabits is you, you're the temple of the living God. Jesus said that, do you not know, right? You are the temple of the living God, right? And so I write this se section, it's called Shem, which means name. And uh, it's the last section of the book. And I, I talk about the word, Shem, let me show it, and maybe we'll close out with this. This is important. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, also throughout the book, I mention if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's on the bottom of every page. There's a prayer on the last page, a prayer of salvation. If you don't know Him as Lord and Savior, um, don't read the book. Do, read the last page. You know. And, and I, I put that in there. Oh, this is, these are the euphemistic terms that they love to use about AI, the alignment problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what that means, it doesn't mean your tires are out of a line. It means that AI is not aligned with what we want. Okay. And they call it the alignment problem. This is a statement that Sundar Pichai said, AI will be as good or as evil as human nature allows. Well, God says there's none righteous, no, not one, no one who understands. This is God. Okay. So AI will be as good or as evil as human nature allows. Okay. <laughs> good luck with that. Um, okay. So the last section is, oh, uh, this is interesting too, by the way. See that picture? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's that's that was made by Dali. Okay. Remember Og of Bashan? Remember Og of Bashan? Um Bashan, I remember Bashan. Og of Bashan, he was he had 18 foot iron bed. This is a Canaanite king. Og was a race of giants, Raphaim, a type of Nephilim, by the way. Right? And so he had two rows of teeth and six fingers. And this is a, a, a close-up shot of the hands that are, that AI makes on people. Oh, yeah. I've noticed that. Yeah, they all have weird... That's how you can look at the pictures and tell if they're real or fake is look at the hands. They usually have six it fingers. used to be. They're, they're better now because the programmers have, have injected the understanding that, hey, we don't have six fingers anymore. 
that was you guys, not us. <laughs> so, so like, listen, oh, yeah, we forgot. So, so look, yeah, exactly. They, when they were last fleshly beings before the flood, they had six fingers. And so they weren't making their hands wrong. They were making them right in their mind. Okay. Mm. Okay. And so keep that in mind. This is another proof that AI is legion. Okay. So right here, Shem equals name. What's in a name? Okay. So the word Shem in, in Paleo Hebrew is sheen, which means teeth, and mem, which means water. Okay. Hmm. And so remember, if you know anything about the book of Enoch, that Enoch was asked by the angels to go and speak on their behalf to save their children, their off, their evil offspring. And God said, nope, they're going to be evil spirits upon the earth. They're going to hunger and not eat, and they're going to thirst and not drink. They will not have a name. They will not eat teeth. Sheen, they will not drink mem they will not have a name if you don't have a name your name can't be written in the lamb's book of life okay and so i, I holy spirit literally was you say hey look at this they don't have a name that's why they god said they can't be saved they don't have a shem yeah they don't have a name and yeah great. And, and, a, and without having a body, like that's when my son had that conversation that AI yes. said this, it said, I use AI to deploy my will essentially like, and imagine not having a body, how frustrating that would be like that old movie ghost, you know, where he's trying to make something like a penny move off the ground and you can't like you, and yeah. it, I know ghosts aren't real, but like when I used to believe in that stuff and I watched that movie many years ago, um, thinking about how frustrating that would be if you just couldn't, you would just go through everything. You, nobody could hear you. And so they use any means they can to communicate, either Ouija boards. And now everybody's got yeah, these have it. looking glasses in their house where they can talk to dead celebrities and things that we've never even thought about. Scrying doing. mirrors. Scrying yeah. mirrors. Okay. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Hey, somebody made a statement in here we should we should address. Yeah, it's up one? a little ways. Okay. I saw it, a person that says a Bible doesn't contradict aliens. There are other worlds. Okay. Uh, okay. Now that's probably I don't know who that is, but yeah. So so just just for sake of correcting, because first of all, that actually is a fallen angel concept. Mormonism teaches that. Okay, mm -hmm. that when you die, you get your you get to be king, Lord, God over your own world. That is a fallen angel doctrine. That is doctrines of demons. Okay, and and that see. Those are dangerous things to believe if, if that's even a real person. Okay. And, and so we have to be careful. The, the earth, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. The stars, they're luminaries folks, right? I, I know I'm preaching the choir to you, yeah. Josh, but well, I, well, they, they don't look like angels. That, that's how they express in this realm. We see them as luminaries, as lights. But the scripture says the heavens declare the glory of God. Okay. Their voice can be is everywhere. They can be heard everywhere. Right. And so we, we have to break away from churchianity and stop believing in that science, which just means knowledge, by the way. We have to stop believing that science teaches us the truth if it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If it exalts itself against God, God takes precedence in my world. Okay, And uh, I would encourage you, get the book, The Coming Flood of AI, The Rise. If you type... Flood of AI in Amazon, it usually comes to the top of the list. But if you go to floodofai.com, you can, you, the book is linked right at the top of the website. And, um, and listen, I, 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 I pray that you, you all receive the word of knowledge. We prayed before we went live tonight. So AI wouldn't take us down. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, like it did last time. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm joking, but something happened last time. So, um, 
but anyway, uh, I guess we should probably wrap it up because yeah. it's almost two hours. And um, listen, I, I, I just want to thank you, Josh. I, uh, truly, I'm blessed. I'm honored to be here, man. It's yeah, same here, man. It's been such I a watch journey. You guys, I catch you when I can once in a while, and it's 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 nice nice to see you. Yeah, it's fun to see when I get the live notification from you. You're still out there doing this in spite of I mean, doing our thing, I mean, you actually have like a reputation to uphold i'm not, i would i came out of nowhere <laughs> yeah i got a i got a blemished reputation from my past i got to yeah. correct <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but anyway so yeah so again oh and um i'll look i'll look maybe oh, yeah, maybe. Who the winner was who was the winner of the book yeah. This is hey, a big deal. Don't leave if you put in the email. Want. We need a drum roll or something. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Let's see. Let me go find the browser for it. Got to change the AI. Go to Gmail. It looks like Robin Hatcher. Robin Hatcher. Is Robin Hatcher one? still in the chat? Robin Hatcher. Yes, and I, I better take her email down. Yeah, Robin yeah. Hatcher, Robin Hatcher is the winner of the book. And Robin, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you uh, a message back, and I need to get your mailing address. So there's that. And listen, if you if you order the book and you put your name, you put a comment in the page for purchasing. Um, giving this laptop away. Of giving it away, it's got Bible study tools on it. Oh, somebody and out there needs that. I know you do. I, 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 I've done this over the years, and and I always put a pack. Oh, it's got what I call in the know video. I think some of you guys' videos are on there too, because I can oh, download yeah. them and I put on, uh, you know, different, different, uh, different, uh, you know, conspiratorial ideals right uh i got mike heiser stuff on here and uh and so i i put all these videos i put uh bible study tools different versions of the bible pdfs of the book of enoch and all the apocryphal books um all on this laptop it's going to also have an external uh, uh, uh monitor with it and uh wireless mouse all that uh Oops, sorry. Maybe maybe, maybe maybe I'll draw it in uh, I don't know a month or two. I'm not sure exactly when, but it's going to be before the end of the year. That's for sure. Um. Anyway, so listen. To, thanks again for having me on. I really appreciate it, oh, man. man. Always a blessing, man. It's, yeah. I'll do this more often. I can close in prayer. I can close. Yeah. I like to close in the erotic prayer, if you don't mind. Sure, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, okay. So, uh, for those who haven't been to my channel before, um, so in Numbers six and twenty four, God instructs Moses to tell Aaron, "This is how you shall put my mark upon my people." Uh, I discovered recently in the Hebrew, right after it says "mark," it says "alef tav," which is an indicator of Jesus. It's like this is how you put me on my people. You put Jesus on my people, okay? The first and the last is Aleph Tov, okay? And so, um, so the, the scripture in English sounds like this. It's, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance to you and give you peace. But in the Hebrew, it's Yavre Kaka Yahweh Vayishme Rakab. Yah Yahweh Penevaleka Vehoneka. Yisa Yahweh Penevaleka Veyusemleka Shalom. Peace in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks everyone for joining in. Did it oh, I thought you froze for a second. I was like, no, <laughs> not again. <laughs> yeah. But been a blessing. You guys are awesome. It's uh so much more around the corner. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back soon. Hopefully we have our Kingdom Crew, not our um, Kingdom Crew conference that we'll be speaking in. Um, October 17th is, I think, when I'll be speaking, but the conference runs from the 16th to the 22nd. And then, ironically, there's the Days of Noah, which we're in, um, series coming out. Kingdom in Context is um, the one putting all that stuff together. So uh, 
that'll be soon. So make sure you hit that bell icon so we can share that stuff with you, like updates about it, how to watch and all that, because it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I know the presentation I'm doing, my, my uh, viewpoint on Genesis has changed within the last week, like literally what I was creating and making and thought it was already figured out. I had to change things because my view on this has changed. So the that's how deep the word is. It's one of those things that can just keep going and going. The complexities of it, it's like life. Mm, something we can't replicate. You can't replicate it's awesome. that book. It's too good. Yeah. So um, it's going to be fun. But yeah, thanks, Dave. Again, all of you that joined in, it's been a blessing. And congrats, thanks, Robin. All right. Well, we will see you guys very soon.